everybody, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. The Bible says that God himself, he is Baal Erezem. Are you ready to shake hands with the Lord of the breakthrough? Today, we're talking about breakthrough in worship. And who better than to interview than the one and only Mr. Eddie James, Bishop Eddie James, the one and only gospel <laughs> extraordinaire. One and only man of God, Eddie James. Thanks so much for being on our show today. Oh, man. Thank you, Ben, for having me. I'm so grateful to be a part of your show. Wow, sir. Uh, we love you greatly. I mean, we've been following your ministry for years. Literally, there's probably nobody in the Christian world who hasn't heard your song, uh, songs or even sang uh, your songs or even worshiped the Lord to your songs. So we just appreciate your ministry. Uh, I remember the first time I met you and interviewed you. Actually, I interviewed you in Jerusalem. Uh, I don't know right. if you remember that. Yes. And it <laughs> a number of years ago. And Man. Here, so thank you for coming on our show. You know, we're talking about breakthrough in worship. And you've really been in this move of God. I mean, talk to us. I mean, you, you've partnered with Sean Foyt. I mean, you've been some in some extended revivals recently, even from this year, 2021. I mean, talk to us, man. I got there's so much going on percolating in the atmospheres. Just to show your heart, sir, I mean, you, you've really been on a roll with the move of God right now. I'm telling you, man, the Lord has just put us right in the middle of an outpouring that he is releasing in America. And I am just honored. I'm humbled. I am excited. I am so filled with anticipation of what this is going to look like for our nation, the transformation from the churches to the White House to the, sec, you know, the, the you know, schools and just the industry, uh, entertainment industry, and just all of it. I believe that God is positioning his people to release his glory in such a way that it's going to impact all aspects of culture. And I find myself right now in the middle of it. Uh, I've been privileged to uh, be currently working with uh, Sean Foyt. We're, we're going across the country together. I've been blessed to uh, recently to be in services and revival meetings with uh, Rodney Howard Brown. And, and, uh, and even at the beginning of this year at our own base in Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, we started out with, with a three-day worship gathering called Worship Fest that turned into about 30 days of revival in, in January. So, and uh, Jonathan Stidham and some others who are powerful evangelists, prophetic voices, we've just been having crazy outpourings of the Holy Spirit, and it's blowing my mind. And uh, and as you're talking about just breakthrough, specifically in worship, that worship has a way um, that when it's released and the sound in the body of Christ is released in the atmosphere, that it opens up an opportunity for incredible breakthroughs, uh, physical, uh, spiritual, emotional. I mean, we're seeing everything from limbs grow to addiction to heroin being broken to people coming to Jesus just as we're worshiping. I mean, no one's laying hands yet. No one's calling an altar call, but just the power and the glory of God coming through people worshiping God is releasing breakthroughs. What Paul and Silas did in prison. You know, they begin to pray and sing praises. The prisoners heard them. The foundation of the prisons was shaken. Every chain was broken. Every prison door was open. That's the God of the breakthrough that we serve. So, Wow, so good. Amen. And whenever we do worship, of course, the Bible says in the book of Psalms that he's, he's enthroned upon the praises of our heart. So whenever we sing praises, that literally creates a throne or a chair for Jesus to come and sit. With, amongst us. And I believe right now we're about to see greater miracles, kingdom dominion, uh, kingdom reign. We're about to see God, in a sense, dominate the atmosphere because of your worship. Now, Mr. Eddie, you know, in a time where it seems so turbulent, tumultuous uh, in the news, etc., and we're not ignoring it, we're not saying that's not there. But in a world where it seems like there's a pandemic or a pandemic, and pandemonium taking place, how important do you think it is to have a freedom of worship? Because that's what even our nation's built on, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom to worship. How important do you think that is in this season right now? Well, I believe it is, you know, we talk about services in America that are essential. 
I believe the greatest essential need of America is to worship and glorify God. I believe to allow the opportunity for Christian expression to, to seek the Lord, to release who he is in the earth. And I don't think that it's, it's, I don't think the church should sit back and let government dictate how essential who we are and what we do is. I, I, I think that we have allowed the, sac- the secular to dictate the, how important the sacred is. And that to me has become problematic. So it is up to government to tell us if we should preach, if we should sing, if we should lay hands, if we should pray, if we should gather, if we should. And I think it's important for government and those who have the data to give us the truth. And I do mean the actual truth of the data that we need so that we can by that pray and make, you know, heavenly based decisions, God based decisions on how we navigate through this and not move out of out of fear. But I don't think that it is the government's job to tell the church how essential they are and what they should and should not do. I understand that for some, they may mean well, they may in their heart want to make sure that people are safe and people are taken care of. And, 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 and listen, I don't say this to be insensitive. I have dear friends of mine who have been affected by COVID, some who have died because of COVID. So I'm not undermining or lessening uh, that this is a problem. Um, I do believe that there are agendas that are much bigger than we know about, but, but I don't, again, I don't believe that, uh, the COVID thing doesn't exist. I do believe it is a real issue. However, God is bigger than that. This is one knee that will bow to the name of Jesus. And, you know, when I look at what Paul, uh, what James rather teaches us, that when there's one sick among you, call for the elders of the church, let them lay hands on the sick. Well, is that only for diseases that aren't contagious? You know, is that only, did, did do we not think that Jesus had already factored in the leper, factored in the, you know, the, the different things that might be a challenge? And, and then I think of my brothers and sisters who suffer for way graver issues than this overseas. You know, I mean, at what point do we realize the gospel is the answer to COVID? The gospel is the answer to the crisis that we're seeing. Jesus Christ is the answer. You know, and I, I, uh, I, I just want to encourage uh, pastors and leaders who are, who are paying, uh, you know, who are tuning into this, that don't allow the secular to tell the sacred how important and valuable you are to the earth. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. You are the most essential need of the planet. Jesus Christ left his body on this planet to release his heart and his power and his glory into the world. If the world ever needed it, it's right now. People full of faith, full of power, need to take on that heart of of, of, of I think it's John Lake who went to Africa and instead of him running from the disease, he ran right into it. Just this contagious disease and nobody wanted to touch him and nobody wanted to have anything to do with him. But that disease was dying in his hand, that the power of God in him was greater than the power of that disease. And I just believe that there are there should be a faith that rises up in us to say, you know what, devil, I'm not going to let you tell us that we're not going to worship and we're going to act in fear. And I, again, I'm not trying to be insensitive do whatever you think makes you comfortable. But at the end of the day, I want to advance the kingdom of God the way God told us to do it. He said, lay hands on the leper, cleanse the leper, heal the sick, cast out devils. And if he told us to do that, I am sure he, he didn't say, well, do it only if, it, you know, if, if the disease is contagious. I believe the more detrimental it is, the more power and faith should rise up in the people of God to believe God for signs wonders, and miracles. And guess what? It's happening. It's happening. I know men of God that are so full of faith right now that they're laying hands on COVID victims and they're getting healed just like that. They're getting delivered just like that. Don't tell me God is not bigger than this disease. Yeah. So. Hey, man, you're preaching, man, of God. And of course, <laughs> COVID is not even a disease. You know, it, it is a bacteria. It's a virus. So it's right. not even a disease. Um, there are more uh, incurable, you know, more uh, devastating, uh, you know, diseases, things out there. But, of course, the Bible says that Jesus, he bore our sins and took our sickness. So, therefore, we were healed. You know, that's uh, the Messianic chapter in the book of Isaiah. Right. So, there is a Messianic anointing of power and miracles that God's releasing in his hour like never before. 
you know, we we're talking about man of God, because, um, you know, as we're talking about breakthrough into worship, we're also talking about the essentiality of the church and the essentiality of our freedom to worship. In fact, that's why God smitted or smote Pharaoh to let his people go. So we're literally seeing a mass exodus of people to be free to the worship. What, what did God say? Let my people go so that they can get rich. Let my people go so they can just sit on the couch uh, and be afraid and watch television all day. No, let my people go so that they may worship, worship me. And of course, that word worship in Hebrew also means to serve. Now, I believe that God is setting people free, the captives free, so that there may be a greater thrust of worship. And that's what God's doing right now. But I love, even you mentioned Dr. Ronnie Hart Brown, who we've been building a relationship with. But, you know, they've been doing the stand, uh, which is an outdoor stadium-like crusade gathering every day, almost 300 days straight now. But then I love what Dr. Ronnie says. We're taking a stand in America for the nations of the earth, for those who cannot take a stand. And that really is worship. It's being a voice to the voiceless, being a father to the fatherless, clothing the orphans and the widows. It's releasing justice and mercy on the earth. Talk to us, Bishop. Ed yeah, I have, to, I have to just jump in here. I, first of all, I just want, I, I hope he gets to see this. I just want to say how much I appreciate Dr. Rodney Howard Brown for being the example of what it means to not be afraid, but to take a stand and to continue to worship. And I've had the privilege of leading worship many times uh, at the stand and seeing how he has with boldness, I mean, with boldness, faced this giant and slaying it in Jesus' name. And it's put such faith in me because I'm seeing people getting healed. I'm seeing people getting delivered. And I'm seeing how many people are finding hope because somebody is willing against all odds to take a stand. I mean, he's going to jail over this thing. He's he's faced, you know, so much attack from the media over this thing and he just will not back down. And it took a South African brother to show America what it means to stand in the face of adversity. He, you know, when I talked to him about this, you know, he's like, man, he said, there, there, there are, there are viruses and there are diseases that are way worse than what this COVID virus is doing in Africa. He said, we've got in places where people are coming with just disease is just oozing out of their skin. He says, I lay hands on them. Like it's no big deal. He said, man, we are called. This is our assignment. This is what we're supposed to do. The church is supposed to be there for the hurting, for the broken, for the lost. And if we can have doctors who will put themselves in harm's way, and we can have all these other, what we call essential services, put themselves in harm's way, and the best they can do is save the physical, how much more should those of us who have the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, full of the Holy Ghost, we have the word, we have his spirit, we have signs, wonders, and miracles that follow the believer. How much more should we be the most essential part of what's going to turn this thing around in our nation and in our world? Why are we hiding? And why are we letting government dictate what the church can do? We are letting, this issue is telling the government, you can tell the church whatever and we're gonna follow suit. It should be the other way around. The world should be looking to us saying, what should we do? The world should be looking to us saying, what steps do we take? The world should be looking to us to be the moral compass, the light, the salt. The world should be looking to us saying, we're not sure how to handle this, but you are people of faith. You are people who, are, who understand the heart of God and the word of God. Give us direction that we may walk therein. We should be the ones. And, and I feel like Man, if we could just stop being Babylon and being in the bed with, with the world and start being the voice and being the light we're supposed to be, we can turn this thing around. Man, I, again, I just, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, I appreciate you because so much of my faith is because of him. So much of my willingness to go and to do and, and not be afraid is because that man has modeled what it meant to be a bold lion that roars in Jesus' name in this hour. Well, praise God. Absolutely. I know Dr. Ron has been such a strength to me and so many other ministers, ministries 
around the world as well. And I love you said, Bishop Eddie, that the righteous will be as bold as lions. Yes. But the wicked flee, although no one pursues them. Is somebody pursuing you? Are you being pursued or not? The wicked flee as if, but nobody's pursuing them. So the righteous are lions. So there is a roar of freedom, a roar of worship, yes, a roar of the sounds of God, the voices that proceed from the throne of heaven. Like lightning bolts and thunders, there's a roar of the sons of thunder being raised up in this hour. So we will hear the word of God preached and demonstrate it with mighty signs and wonders. Now, man of God, I, I, I so love what we're talking about. Uh, you know, but we need the outpouring of the Holy Ghost like never before. And you're seeing it right now. You're seeing it right now to a greater way, level, and dimension. Of course, we see the news where there's political division. There's a racial division where there's yeah. the uh, lifting up of different issues and social issues, even in the church. It seems so divided right now. But how important do you think it is for true worship in spirit and truth to be lifted up in one voice, one sound, one name, one faith, one Lord, one baptism? And as that happens, there's an Acts 2 moment that comes upon the church. Every race, every creed, every color Man. from planet Earth join together to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How important do you think that is today, right now? I think it's crucial because one of the things that worship does when people worship in spirit and in truth is it brings over us a spirit of humility. Mm. A lot of the reason why there's so much infighting is because there's too much pride. There's a lot of pride in the church. There's a lot of pride in the black church and the white church. There's, everybody has their, you know, the Democrats, the Republicans, it's, you know, black and white, whatever. Everybody's got their, you know, their spin on what should be happening today. But if you really worship in spirit and you worship in truth, there's going to come a humility over your spirit. That's why some of the worship expressions that we use is like lifting up our hands or, or the bowing or the laying prostrate on the ground, the bowing of your head. Why do we have all of these expressions? It's to teach humility. It's to teach that I am submitted. I surrender. I yield. I, I give myself to one that's higher than, than I am. And the Jesus that we do that for, he is not pro-black or pro-white. He's not pro-democrat. He's not pro-republican. He's pro-kingdom. And because of that, all of us should come together with under the same banner, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, with the word of God. I, I, you know, I've asked myself this question. How come the 10 most powerful preaching voices of our day, and I won't name them, but I've been in every one of their meetings, and I can tell you exactly who they are, and I've been on the, on the black ones and the white ones and the Hispanic ones, and I would say, how come the top, you know, 10 to 15 leaders of our day, seeing the crisis that we're in, can't sit in one room, put the Bible in the center, get on their face and cry out to God, pray in the Holy Ghost, wash each other's feet, repent to each other for any hatred, any racial injustice, any whatever it may be, and then say, as a church, one church in America, what will be our stance? And don't come out of that room until they get the heart of Jesus for this nation. When we do that, which I think revival is going to help create that atmosphere. But if we do that, then I'm telling you, we can end all of the tension. We can end all yeah. of the junk that goes on. The reason why there's fighting in Republican and Democrat and black and white is because the church has not modeled what it should be modeling to walk together in unity. That's why Psalms 133, the enemy fights it. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. In Acts chapter two, they were all with one accord in one place. It wasn't gonna fall until that happened, until they were all with one accord. That means in prayer, there was a getting rid of self and a dying to a man's agenda and dying to mindsets and dying to whatever, to say, we want the promise of the Father. We want the Holy Spirit. And I'll begin to pray in that direction. And, and at the end of that Acts chapter 2 prayer meeting, 
They were speaking in languages that they could not understand, but people came from all over the world who heard the gospel preached because Jewish brothers and sisters died to themselves and began to release Jesus to people who didn't look like them, didn't have their skin tone, didn't have their color, didn't have their culture. This is why it's essential, because only by the power of the Holy Spirit can we do that. Wow, my gosh. And that's why even yourself uh, and even partnering with Sean Foy together, there's a wonderful synergy taking place. And I believe right now in the season, God is releasing new partnerships, new synergies, new wineskins <laughs> for the new glory and the new move of God that's coming together. Uh, the way you said it, the way you phrased it earlier was brilliant. It, it's, it's like that Jesus movement with the Azusa Street movement. You know, he, he brings like the Jesus movement. I'm coming with William Seymour. You know, we come together and we're bringing two completely different streams, if you will. You yeah. know, he comes from the way his style and his music and whatnot. And what I do, it's different. It's so, no one would ever put that on the same stage, but we're doing it and we're seeing fire. Oh. Man, we're seeing miracles like crazy. We're seeing limbs grow. We're seeing ears open up. We're seeing eyes getting healed. We're seeing heroin addicts getting set free. We're seeing people getting saved by the hundreds. It's a crazy outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We're coming together. We have two different styles and two different streams, but we have one daddy. We have one father. We've been bought by one blood, saved by one savior, delivered by one cross. But you know, we, uh, it's just an amazing thing. And what we're doing together, I believe is, is a, is, to me, it's a sign and a wonder to America. This is what true godly unity looks like. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, by the love you have for one another. I genuinely love Sean. Sean genuinely loves me. We have a heart for each other, and we're seeing the glory of God pour out through brothers, through a family atmosphere and environment that says, we want Jesus more than our own culture, more than our own skin tone, more than our own point of view, more than our own. And when you have that, see, this is the problem. A lot of people, you know, well, what about you know, you know, he's Republican or he's conservative. Or what, what about this? See, you got to kill that because when Jesus comes, he brings justice. When yeah. Jesus comes, he brings, he'll bring righteousness and justice. That's the throne that he is. You know, you talked about how he is enthroned upon our worship. Well, his throne is righteousness and justice. Oh. He's going to bring it. He is not going to see the poor and the needy and the broken and the hurting not be taken care of when his glory is in the room. When he comes, he he handles and deals with every unjust issue that's that's being, uh, you know, manifested among us. So I'm not worried. I believe that the answer to this racial tension is the glory of the Lord. I believe the answer to the political unrest is the glory of the Lord. Absolutely, and we're <laughs> God move and manifest today like never before. The Bible says Isaiah sixty one, though the earth is surrounded, filled with gross, deep darkness, still a rise and shine for his glory comes upon you. So get ready for that end of season, people of God. And, and brother, uh, you know, Bishop Eddie, both you and, and Sean, both of you are modeling something so fresh that's so needed today like never before. You know, uh, I, I want to talk about this man of God because I'm, I'm remembering uh, your photo. You were there praying over President Trump uh, with a number of different worship leaders, gospel artists, singers. And, uh, I mean, of course, I know without a shadow of a doubt, uh, you know, uh, of course, if you're invited to pray over uh, President Biden, you probably would do the same or any. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, of course, I'm, I'm sure you received, you know, so much <laughs> misunderstanding, scrutiny, hate mail, whatever. And, you know, in today's day, you'll you'll receive hate mail and misunderstanding from anything, right? Uh, but then yeah. talk to us about that because you're not wanting uh, a platform or anything, but it's really God bringing you into a place such as the Oval Office, the White House, to release the sound of the presence of the Lord together with all brothers and sisters uh, over America. So talk to us just about that moment and uh, whatever's on your heart. You know, man, I would I would more than happy to go to the White House for Biden. Uh, I would be more than happy to lay hands on him to lead, release worship in that context, because it's not about who's the president. It is about that office. It's about that that is 
the most powerful seat, not only in America, but in the globe. And if anybody should be there, it should be the people of God. So for me, it was a no brainer. I, I just, it wasn't even something to think about. I thought, oh, I get to go and lead, help, help release worship and, and pray for the president. Absolutely. I wasn't even that, you know, involved that much in, in politics. I wasn't following Trump and all them like that. You know, I, you know, I pray for him. I pray that God would use him and bless him, but I wasn't really into it. But man, I'm telling you, I got so much attack from the, you know, from the body of Christ and, and specifically my, my, my uh, Democrat brothers and sisters who, and a lot of them, I think was out of pain, out of hurt. And, and I, and I, I share some of the concerns of what happened with George Floyd and, and all of that kind of stuff. I get it. But the answer can't be isolation. God never told us to run from each other. He told us to run to each other. And I, and I, you know, I don't know. I just feel like that, that so many preachers and so many pastors have maybe out of pain, out of disappointment, have not modeled the best heart, God heart, and how they have dealt with their disappointment in the administration, uh, specifically the Trump administration. And I just, I just believe that if God can raise up Nebuchadnezzar and God can raise up Pharaoh and God can raise up a Persian king and Cyrus and all that and use people who are completely outside of the faith, wow. completely outside of the faith to administer his heart in the earth, how much more can God use a man who invites prayer? who invites worship, who invites go after God. How much more can God do that? And even though you, some may disagree with his rhetoric or may disagree with some of his policies, what we have to admit is that he's in that office and that what is the church's responsibility to do is pray and believe for the best. I'm doing the same thing for Biden. I would do it for any of them because that's who's there. And so what do I want? I don't want them to fail. I want them to succeed. I want them to follow the heart of God. I want them to walk in the ways of God. And, and I feel like the church, uh, we, we, the Bible tells us to not be conformed to this world. And I believe that what has happened online, especially with social media, is we've seen a lot of people who have conformed to the world. They've used the world's mindset, the world's mannerisms, the world's uh, way of dealing with their anger to deal with the situation. And, and, and I'm saying, who's discipling you? Mm. Where is the Jesus in this attitude? Where, where is the God in your character right now? You know, do you think that Jesus is not able to take this situation and use it for his glory? So anyway, I, 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 I chose at some point to just not even answer the, the, the emails and the text messages and the, the, you know, the Instagram posts and all that. I, you know, it's not even worth it anymore. At the end of the day, you have to obey the Lord and do what the Lord tells you to do. And sometimes that's going to come with scrutiny. Sometimes it's going to come with attack. In fact, I believe if, you, if you're not getting attacked, you might not be doing it right. <laughs> you know, you might not be doing this the way it needs to be done. So praise the Lord, you know. Wow. Praise God. You know, uh, man of God, as we're bringing the show to a close right now, um, you know, and as we're talking about breakthrough and worship, I mean, you know, God's doing something in America, in the nations of the earth. God's doing something supernatural. And our hearts of worship keeps us postured, keeps us humble, keeps us pure in love. And I believe we're about to see a whole new sound of worship, of unity coming forth yes. today like never before. Now, man of God, as we're about to close, I want you to pray a prayer of impartation. Maybe there's a prophetic word or a song or something, a tune, a hymn. But, you know, I, I just want you to prophetically release over our friends, our viewers watching today as an impartation as we're bringing the show to a close. What's coming in, what, what the Lord is revealing in my spirit is that there are those who are watching that God is going to fill you with boldness. One of the marks of the, of the, of the book of Acts, uh, the church of Acts, is that when they begin to suffer persecution and suffer attack because of their faith, the Bible says that they begin to pray and the place where they prayed was shaken and that God had given them boldness, a fresh boldness to proclaim the, proclaim the gospel. And I just declare for every pastor, for every prophetic voice that's watching this, for every worship leader that's watching this, I just declare a holy boldness that you would roar like a lion in this season, that you would not walk in any fear. 
that you would walk in love, but you would be bold. You would walk with the heart of God and humility, but you would be bold. You would be bold as a lion to declare the heart of God, the truth of God, the grace of God in this hour, that you would not fear COVID, you would not fear attacks from people, you would not walk in fear from what others may think concerning your journey, your pursuit, your ministry, that when God unctions you to operate in the prophetic, to begin to share the gospel, to lay hands on the sick, that there will be no fear, no fear, no fear, but a boldness to step up and say, I am going to activate what God has placed inside of me. I'm going to move in the direction of the purpose and power of God for my life. So I just pray boldness upon you. I just pray no fear upon you, but that you are courageous in this hour and that you walk in power and in love and in a sound mind in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bishop Eddie James, thank you so much for being on our show today. We love you. We appreciate you. And thank you for carrying a break or anointing into season. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you, sir. (laughs) Well, people of God, that was the one and only Eddie James, who's carrying a now sound for a breakthrough in this generation. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Breaker. And we want you to comment below. What ministered to you the most? What did you enjoy the most? And make sure you share and make sure you subscribe. This was Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker today with Eddie James, where we're believing for breakthrough in your worship. God bless you.